Okay, you've heard of Wardley mapping, maybe you've watched Simon give a talk, maybe you've even started reading the book, but how the heck do you actually make a map, and how do you use it for strategy? We're going to do this real fast, so buckle up. We're going to use two templates and two reference tables. First things first, we're going to make a list. You can do this in Miro, you can print this template out, you can sketch it out on a blank piece of paper, doesn't matter. If you want to grab the template, just go to lwm.events slash one in your browser. Okay, stick to one user, one need, and one capability. That's your first list. Okay, who is being served by the system that you are about to map? Generally, I say pick a situation that you care about. Doesn't matter what it is. Who is getting value from that system? Let's say we're going to make a map about me shoveling snow. So the user is me, Ben. My need is to go to the grocery store. And in order to go to the grocery store, I need to shovel snow because there's snow on the ground and I can't get to my car. That's the simplest version of this thing. All right, made a list. If you've made a list, you can move on. Once you have that list, copy it over here in this template. Now we're going to turn that list into a value chain. And all that means is we're going to add relationships. In a worthy map, a value chain is a list like this related by dependency. So Ben needs to go to the grocery store. In order to go to the grocery store, he needs to shovel snow. So you can kind of imagine like there's a little needs relationship on each of these relationships. And so once you've done that, once you've added those relationships, just see if it makes sense by saying the sentence out loud. Ben needs to go to the grocery store. To go to the grocery store, we need to shovel snow. If it makes sense, you've succeeded. Okay, now for the fun part. Once you've got your list and your value chain, now we're going to turn it into a Wardley map. So go to your browser, grab the second template, print it out, sketch it out, whatever you gotta do in order to make it look something like this. And then copy this over. And now we're going to put the need in that first list that we made above this dotted line. And we're gonna put the capability below the dotted line. So remember we've got user, need, and capability need above the dotted line, capability below the dotted line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give space meaning by sorting this from left to right based on how we think the need and the capability are, what their qualities are. Go to the grocery store. Is it a gamble, a decent bet, a user demand, or the cost of doing business? I think it's a user demand because most of my groceries are delivered at this point. Now, I might be wrong. I might have the wrong opinions about this stuff. But it doesn't matter. You can talk about it later. You can make it better later. In order to go to the grocery store, we need to shovel snow. Okay, where is shoveling snow from left to right? Is it in Genesis, custom built, product, or commodity? I think shoveling snow is in commodity. Now, you might ask, how do I know that? Great question. If you need help figuring out where to put something, go to LWM events slash evolution and sit with this table a little bit. You'll notice stages one, two, three, and four, again, right here. And you'll notice similar labels, Genesis, custom, product, commodity. And just sit with these characteristics on the, on the left-hand side and try to reverse engineer which stage the thing is in based on the characteristics. My favorite is here, failure. So when I'm shoveling snow, is failure common? Is it moderate, unsurprising, but disappointing? Is it not tolerated, focusing on constant improvement? Or is it surprising? Well, frankly, in my world, failure doesn't happen with shoveling snow. You just do it, it's fine. And that's why I placed it in stage four. Now you can look at other characteristics, that's fine. But for now, that's where I'm going to place it from left to right. 
Again, I could be wrong. Doesn't matter. You'll discuss it with others. You'll make it better. Don't get stuck trying to figure out the perfect place to put the thing. Just get it on the map and get your first iteration done and move on. Okay, now you have your minimum viable map. What do you do with it? And this is where this table comes into play. So open this up, lwm.events slash opportunities. For each part of your map here, in particular the needs and the capabilities, take a look at these obvious opportunities. This is boiled down from Simon Wardley's tables of climate patterns, doctrinal principles, and strategic gameplays. It's just a list of prompts that you can use to examine your map to see if there's an opportunity. So for the first one, reduce bias. Are we treating this capability differently than the rest of the world? Well, let me just look here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose shoveling snow real quick. I'm gonna zoom in on it. Are we treating this capability different than the rest of the world? I don't think so. So there's no difference there. There's no opportunity. That's fine. Move on. Use appropriate methods. Okay, capabilities in stage four. So are we outsourcing to utility suppliers and using Six Sigma? Now, not everything in your life is going to need Six Sigma or Lean or Agile or whatever. But think about what kind of techniques are embodied by these methods. Are we outsourcing to utility suppliers and using Six Sigma techniques? Well. I really ought to have someone else shovel the snow for me, perhaps. Since I rent, maybe my landlord should be paying for someone to shovel the snow so I don't have to. That's certainly possible. But you know, everything's contextual. It might generally be the right answer, but maybe for me it's not the right answer. It's up to you to make that determination. Now you can go all the way through the rest of this table and see if there are opportunities that are just sitting there waiting to be discovered. Obvious opportunities, right? One that I'll point out is build alliances. Do we have friends in the global market who also need this capability? Can we work together with others to make this capability better? Well, my neighbors and I have an alliance around shoveling snow, so that kind of counts. And we have each other's back. If one of us can't shovel snow one morning, someone else shovels snow, and that's just kind of what we do. So now, as you find opportunities, annotate your map, maybe add some text, add any thoughts, and then take your map and share it with someone, walk them through it, and see if there's more to be found. Okay, that's your minimum map. Now you can expand. By keeping the list to three items, you exercise restraint so you don't get too much into the weeds too quickly. Now you can start to expand. Okay, what other capabilities are involved with going to the grocery store? Maybe driving. And then you repeat you go back through, you fix your value chain, you add it to your Wardley map, and you iterate. And so on and so forth. And then repeat by going through the opportunities table. That is, I think, one of the easiest ways to do mapping. Let me know if you have any questions. You can go to learnmorethemapping.com to learn more. We're running classes at lwm.events. It's the classes section of learnmorethemapping.com. And we've got something coming up February 17th, 2021. You can take a look at that. You will make maps. So we'll walk you through this process. You will learn how to read and make maps, think strategically, create alignment with others through peer conversations. We are going to do whatever it takes to make sure you get started on the right foot and make maps that make a difference. If you want to make sure you find out about all our classes that are coming up, be sure to sign up at lwm.events. And if you need help, you need someone to just to answer a question real quick, DM me at Hired Thought on Twitter, or just use the chat in the bottom right-hand corner of learnworthymapping.com. Now I'm going to need you to stop watching this video, grab a piece of paper, or open up a mirror board or something, and start making your first map. All you gotta do is start out by making a list. And if you can make a list, then you can make a value chain. And if you can make a value chain, then you can make a worldly map. And if you can make a worldly map, then you can engage in the strategic thinking process that Simon Wardley has shared with us all. She says, make a map. Make a map. <laughs>
Oh, she's sharp and pointy. Ah, ow, 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 ow. Okay, okay. 